Okay, so today we're going to be looking at ionization energy. And ionization energy falls under the unit AEPT and under periodic trends. And ionization energy is really important to understand, um, especially because it tells us a lot about the reactivity of certain elements and also tells us how strong the bonds are that are formed in uh, between certain um, atoms and within compounds. So let's first look at what is the definition of ionization energy. What is it actually? So ionization energy is the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous ions. And it's really important to note that it is gaseous and that it is one mole and that you're removing electrons. So what does this actually mean? So if we look at, let's say, magnesium. So magnesium, and in its gaseous state, that's really important. Um, magnesium has two electrons in the outermost shell because it is in group two. So that means that the first ionization energy would be removing one electron. So we would minus an electron, and that would form magnesium plus because now it has one less electron, so comparatively it has one more proton in the nucleus, so overall it has a plus one charge. So it's also important to note that in chemistry, we always write the electron on the other side where it's positive. Because that's the easiest way to understand. So that's what ionization energy is. But what are the trends actually on the periodic table? So if we look at here, we look at the ionization energy trends. So let's first look at down the group because that's the easiest to understand. So down the group, we have more and more energy levels. So the distance between the outermost energy level, so the outermost and the nucleus is really far. So that means that the force of attraction between the nucleus and the outermost energy level is quite weak because there are a lot of energy levels in the middle that we can see here with electrons in them, which what chemists like to call a shielding effect, but shield from the outermost energy level and create repulsion. So that means that the outermost electrons and the outermost energy level is really far from the nucleus. So that means that it is really easy to remove an electron the further it is away from the nucleus and the less of a force of attraction it has with the nucleus. So that means that the further you go down and the more energy levels there are, the ionization energy decreases. So we can write that down. Decreases. <clears throat> okay, now let's look at the trends across a period. So across a period, what we have is we have a constant number of energy levels. So actually, let's look at period three. So in period three, there is a constant number of energy levels. or So we have three. But what is changing is the nuclear charge or the mass. So we have... 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. So across the period, there is more number, an increase in the number of protons in the nucleus. So what does this actually mean? And what are the implications of this? So if there are more protons in the nucleus, but the number of electrons and number of energy levels remains constant, that means that there's a greater force of attraction between the outermost electrons and the nucleus because there are more protons, but the same number of electrons. So the force of attraction is greater. And we like to say that this is the effective nuclear charge. So across a period, the effective nuclear charge increases. So this means that the attraction between the outermost electron and the nucleus 
is stronger as you go across the period. So this means it requires more energy to remove an electron. So generally, across the period, the ionization energy increases. Sorry, increases. But there are a few exceptions. So let's look at what the exceptions are. So the two exceptions that we need to know are the exceptions between, so between group two, so beryllium and boron, or the same goes for magnesium and aluminium, and between nitrogen and oxygen and phosphorus and sulfur. So let's first go through beryllium and boron. So between beryllium and boron, the general rule is that the ionization energy actually decreases, which is what, which actually goes against what we just said, that the ionization energy increases across the period. But there's a reason for this. Let's first write out the electronic configuration of beryllium. So I will just write the shorthand, helium, and then we've got 2s2, 2s2, and that's it. Then in boron, we have the same thing, helium, 2s2, but we have a p orbital. We're now in the p block. We've got 2p1. So now that we are in the p block and we've occupied an orbital of a higher energy level, that means that the electron is in a higher energy further away from the nucleus and thus requires less in energy to be removed from boron. So that means that the ionization energy of boron is actually lower than that of beryllium. So that's one of the exceptions that is important to consider. Then the next exception is the exception of ox nitrogen and oxygen and phosphorus and sulfur. The same rules applies for these, by the way. So nitrogen, let's draw the, let's actually also write the electronic configuration of nitrogen. So we've got helium, um, let's see, 2s2, and we've got 2p123. So what we need to focus on is the out is the p orbital. So let's actually draw the p orbital. If you don't know how to write electronic configurations, please go to another video to understand that first, because it might be a bit difficult to understand this if you don't know that. So this is the p orbital, and we've got three. So one, two, three. That's for nitrogen. But for oxygen, we actually have, there's one more electron, so it looks like this. And the important thing to consider here is this. In the first orbital, we've got two electrons. And we know that two electrons are negatively charged. So if you have two electrons together, they actually repel each other. And when they repel each other, they repel and they get further away from the nucleus. And so they are easier to remove from the atom. So that's why oxygen and sulfur have a lower en ionization energy than nitrogen and phosphorus because they have pairing electrons, whereas nitrogen and phosphorus don't have pairing electrons. They have singular field orbitals. So that means the repulsion of electrons creates a larger distance between the nucleus and the electrons and makes it much easier for the electrons to be removed. So those are the exceptions that we need to know. So let's just go over an overall overview of what we've just learned. So ionization energy is the energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms to form one mole of gaseous ions. So we're removing electrons. This is generally how you would write the form. And you could also write for second ionization energy and third and so on and so forth. And the exceptions that we need to know are those between beryllium and boron, magnesium and aluminium, 
nitrogen and oxygen and phosphorus and sulfur. And of course, we need to know the general trend and how to explain them. So decreases down and increases across generally. However, there are exceptions that need to be considered. I hope this video was helpful. And if you have any questions, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you.